Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Ben. Together we are 15 degrees north. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Gdansk. Gdansk. Gdansk is a port city on the northern coast of Poland, sitting on the Baltic Sea. The fourth biggest in the country, this city has had a tumultuous past due to its key strategic position. The port itself is huge, but the city centre and its old town are situated a couple of miles inland on the banks of the River Vistula. The river links Warsaw to the sea, so the fate of Gdansk has long been tied to the fate of the nation's capital. The city is built entirely on trade, so just like all the other key Baltic cities, this was a member of the Hanseatic League before being incorporated into the Kingdom of Poland. But then it became part of Prussia and eventually Germany in the 19th century. The town is riddled with historic architecture, mostly crowded along the riverbank and around roads called Long Street and Long Market. Well, they're not called that though, are they? Why don't you just say their Polish names? Why don't you say their Polish names? Go on, give it a go. Look, I'm trying really hard not to draw attention to the fact that I find Polish really hard to pronounce. Well, you've done a smashing job. Gdansk is the largest port in Poland, but for a while it wasn't even part of Poland. For a while it was independent, but also it was a German city called Danzig. Gdansk, just like Warsaw, is one of the world's greatest restoration projects. And by restoration, we mean rebuilding. By the end of World War II, Gdansk had been absolutely smashed to bits by Russian artillery. In fact, 90% of the city was completely flattened. So, once the war was over, the decision was made to completely reconstruct the city's historic centre based on archival plans and photographs. And the result is that not only does Gdansk have a gleamingly fresh old town, but it also hasn't fallen into the traps of the UK and Germany, who decided not to reconstruct their history buildings only to be left with numerous city centres that are completely devoid of any real character. Poland did a remarkable job in recreating their past. Even if behind the facades, the buildings are actually much more modern. But that doesn't matter when you climb up the cathedral tower and get the best view of this stunning city. Four hundred steps to the top. <laughs> You'd think us going to the gym would actually mean I mean, we could manage that Saw easily. Saw these pierogies yesterday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> We've run them off. They're just sluggish. Gdansk has hit international headlines several times over the last century, with some major world events happening here. The most recent of these happened in 1980, when the workers of the Gdansk shipyard started to strike against their then communist government, demanding labour reform and civil rights. This struggle is memorialised at a fantastic museum in the city. Though there had been strikes at the shipyard before, this one was led by an electrician called Lech Walesa, who inspired people up and down the country to join him in a general strike against the government. This strike galvanised into the Solidarity Movement, known as Solidarność. 
great polish there. Thank you. And this became a political party, which formed in opposition to the ruling communists. Over the course of the next decade, support grew and grew and inspired movements across the Eastern Bloc that would eventually lead to the fall of the Iron Curtain. So, the fall of communism in Europe all began right here. And once Poland has had its first free elections, Walesa became Poland's first ever democratically elected president. Gdansk's second big headline-grabbing moment happened here at Vesterplatte. It was here that on the 1st of September 1939, the very first shots of World War II were fired when Germany invaded Poland. This is a spot of real significance. Yes, that's where the Germans came in in 1939 and the Second World War started. So we've come out here on a grey and wet and windy day. Cold. We're surrounded on all sides by a working port. It's grey. It's lovely. It's concrete. <laughs> we've just eaten a lot of potato. A complete contrast to our beautiful, <laughs> yes, pretty <today>. day <laughs> around Gdansk. Oh, you've got to uh, but we, you do have to see this spot because, of course, yeah, it's, it's important. very important. That's it, it's where it started. This had been an extremely prosperous city for the German Empire before it was returned to Poland at the end of World War I. So when Hitler began his mission to recapture all of his historic German lands, Danzig was right at the top of his list. Though the Polish army put up a fight, it couldn't withstand the bombardment of Nazi troops and was brought quickly under their control. And within weeks, the Poles were forced to relocate out of the city to be replaced by German settlers, who inhabited 90% of the buildings within a few years and took control of his huge shipyard. Well, it's official. We absolutely love Poland. Yes, we do. We keep coming back. This is our fourth time. Why, Jeremy? Because, well, the architecture, people, the food mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. And it's cheap. It is cheap. Although not quite as cheap as it used to be. I mean, a couple of years yeah. ago we were coming in and we were paying pennies for things. Inflation yeah. it's has still happened. cheaper than yeah. Britain. Comparatively speaking, but I mean, that's not hard right now. <laughs> no. But still. We love it. So one of the best places you need to visit when you go to Poland is a milk bar. It's like a hangover from the Soviet times. Cheap food and drink. And they're still everywhere in Poland. It's so cheap. If you love a dumpling, you'll love the food in Poland. Also, if you love a potato, you'll love it here too. It also has some really cool bars and restaurants, which we will really enjoy exploring. Gdansk has become a big tourist city, so it dines out on its historic past big time, with establishments across the city greatly inspired by the city's own story. So you've got to go for a wee tipple once the sun is set, if only to then give you an excuse to explore the city's streets lit up so beautifully at night. So Gdansk's port is, like most ports, not exactly pretty. But what it does have is a beach resort a few miles up the coast that really is pretty. It's almost like they were overcompensated. That's the Baltic Sea. And how's the temperature? Positively Baltic. Let's see what you did there. Yeah. Sopot became a tourist destination in the 19th century when it was transformed from a sleepy fishing village into a health destination. With bath, promenade and theatre, this became the premier destination on the Baltic Sea. Subsequently, they built a real whopper of a pier, which remains the longest wooden pier in Europe to this day. People would come from the industrial cities of Gdansk, Warsaw and Berlin to come and take the sea air away from the smog of their homes. Today it retains its seaside grandeur even if it is racing on that pier in February. Dzień dobry. 
When you're in Gdansk, you've really got to make the effort to hop on a train and go to Malbork. Why? Well, only because it contains the biggest castle in the entire world. That is the world's largest castle. The biggest. It's very huge. The most enormous. Gigantic. Oh. Gargantuan. Oh, <laughs> Titanic. Huge. No, that was in Belfast. Uh. Built in the 13th century, the Guinness Book of World Records state that Marburg Castle is the largest castle in the world measured by land area. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, OBS. Constructed by the Teutonic Knights, it's a castle that was really intent on not being captured. Hence why it's a fortress, inside a fortress, inside a fortress, inside a fortress. You see, the thing is, there's a reason why Poland has changed hands so many times and passed back and forth between kingdoms and regimes like a game of Pass the Parcel. Poland is flat, and flat places are easy to conquer. Poland is essentially the flat corridor that links the great European powers of the West to the great European powers of the East. So, each time one of those powers wants to advance toward the other, who gets in the way? Well, Poland. Poland is a real victim of its own geography, but Malbec Castle was a Teutonic nice attempt to counter that by building something so impregnable that neither side would ever be able to get inside. And did they? No. Never. Well, at least not technically. Well, either they did or they didn't. Well, it was never captured in battle, no, but it was captured diplomatically many times. So all these elaborate defences they built? Totally impressive, but they were never even used. It's not an exaggeration to say that we are completely obsessed with Poland. This was our fourth trip in as many years and we are already plotting our next one. The cities are stunning, the food is excellent and your money really does go a long way. And you can't underestimate the power of getting a cheap lunch. Especially if it's made of dumplings and potato. <laughs> <laughs>